Hello friends, my name is Dhruv and I am going to explain insertion sort algorithm with example. So first I will be explaining to you insertion sort algorithm itself by using whiteboard animation and then we will move on to the next part which will be seeing the Java code for the algorithm. Now understand insertion sort algorithm by taking an example. So let's take an input list of numbers. So we will take 5 numbers which will be 1000, 1, 100, 101 and 15. Now we start with the first iteration. So in the first iteration we bring down these numbers we start with the initial list and 1000 is considered to be a sorted element or a part of a sorted sub in the unsorted elements that is 1 100 101 and 15 we pick up the element at the front of the unsorted sub list currently the element at the front of the unsorted sub list is 1 so we pick up 1 and then we insert it and that is why the algorithm is called insertion sort we insert 1 at its correct place in the sorted sublist. So currently our sorted sublist contains only one element. So our one is picked up. It moves to the sorted sublist. Now at this point, one is compared with thousand. Basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to find the correct position of one in the sorted sublist. So when one is compared with thousand, the only element in the sorted sublist, it is less than 1000. So 1 moves in in front of 1000 and 1000 shifts. And this is an important point to be noted about insertion sort. That 1000 shifts one place and 1 comes in its place. Next we move to iteration 2. In iteration 2, we bring down the numbers and we now have 1 and 1000 as part of the sorted sublist. So, as you might have noticed now, our iteration 2 has two numbers in the sorted sublist, and these two numbers are 1 and 1000. So, at the end of nth iteration, n numbers will be in the sorted sublist. Okay, now from the unsorted sublist, which is 100, 101, and 15. We need to pick the next element which is at the head of the unsorted sublist which is 100. 100 will be picked up and it will try to find its correct position which is between 1 and 1000. How it works is that 100 is compared successively to the numbers in the sorted sublist. So if we go a little back, so at this point, when 100 is picked up for insertion into the sorted sublist, 100 is compared with 1 first. Since 100 is greater than 1, it doesn't displace 1 at the head of the sorted sublist. It moves forward and then as the next element 1000 is greater than 100 or in other cases it can even be equal to so 100 is then placed in front of 1000 and 1000 will now be shifted towards the right so let's see so 100 is compared to 1000 1000 moves towards the right and 100 comes down in 1000th place now this three numbers or rather these three numbers 100 and 1000 are now at the end of iteration 2 in the correct position. So let's move forward to iteration 3. So our sorted sublist now consists of 1, 100 and 1000. At this point we have 3 elements sorted at the start of iteration 3 and 2 elements as unsorted. 
So now we pick the next element, which is 101. Similar to the equation 2, 101 goes to the list that is the sorted sublist. It's compared to 1, it's greater than 1. It's compared to 100, it's greater than 100. But it's smaller than 1000. So 1000 again moves towards the right and 101 occupies its place. So at the end of the third iteration or at the start of the fourth iteration, we have four numbers in the correct sorted position. Now the only unsorted number, 15, is picked up and is moved to the sorted sublist. As it tries to find its optimum position, it finds that the second place itself is the correct position. Now as you notice, 1000 has moved to the right, 101 has moved one place to the right, and even 100 has moved. So three elements were moved towards the right and this is an important point to remember for interest and sort because it affects its performance. So when you are inserting an element at its correct place, all the elements behind that place in the sorted sublist are moved towards the right. Now imagine a scenario where a list is given in exact reverse order. That is, it is a list is in decreasing order and it has to be made in increasing order. Now imagine how many shifts the last element, if there are 100 elements, the smallest element will be at the last and it will be picked up and it will go and sit at the top position and all the other 99 elements will be shifted. So, the more the elements are in decreasing order or in opposite order of the required order, the higher is the time taken by insertion sort. This is a negative point about insertion sort. Remember, this is a thing to remember. Okay, so now 15 comes in its correct place and now this list is sorted. So at the end of four iterations, that is if we have n numbers then at the end of n minus one iteration, the list is sorted and we get the final sorted list. This list has been sorted as per insertion sort. Now, next we move to the Java code for implementing insertion sort. I'll be walking you through the lines of code of in Java and explaining how we achieve this exact sequence of steps where an element is picked and inserted in the correct place in Java. Okay, so now let's move over to the Java code. Let us now look at the Java code for implementing insertion sort. So let us start by making a Java class first. So we will say public class insertion sort. The class name is quite straightforward. Then we have static int int array. This int array is a static array of primitive ints containing the five number list which we saw an example of just a while back. Next we create the do sort method which is the method which will actually sort the array of ints. So let's see the first for loop with the counter outer. And this for loop represents where your unsorted list starts. So as you remember in the whiteboard animation video that we started the sorting from the second element which in Java is given, represented by index 1. So we start the outer counter with 1 and it runs till the whole array is covered and that is what we did. If you remember we started with 1 as the first number in the unsorted list and we kept on going till we reached the end of the array which is number 15. Next, we will have another for loop which will be named inner after its counter and inner is the number here. So if you see this list which I am showing you with my mouse pointer, so inner is actually the loop which picks up an element 
and keeps on moving it forward in the sorted sublist till it finds the correct position. So what we saw in the whiteboard animation was that the element finds its correct position and all the elements shift to the right. While implementing in Java, how we do it is we pick up the element, we bring it to the correct place and while bringing it to the correct place, we keep moving all elements which are greater than that element towards the right. That is, we keep on swapping it towards the left. So let's see how that swapping code works. So in the first case, when outer is 1, it is picked up, it goes here, it is compared to 1000, it is less than 1000. So in this case, this if condition is satisfied and then we swap 1 and 1000, which is the same effect as moving 1000 towards the right and moving 1 towards the left which I showed you in the animation by picking up one and placing it here. Now, there is one more thing. So, okay, let's write this full loop. And if you see the, this is what our algorithm is. A for loop for outer and for loop inside inner. But before finishing off or signing off, I want to explain how the future iterations will work. So if you see when the when the second element is picked up that is 100 or in the second element in the unsorted sublist in iteration 2 1 and 1000 are in the correct position so 100 will find 1000 and it will swap itself with 1000 as we saw in the whiteboard animation and 1000 will move towards the right and 100 will next find 1 is smaller than it so it will stay where it is. So the next iteration will end with 100 and 1000 in the correct sorted position. In case you are still having doubts, you can go back to the whiteboard animation and have a look again. The only difference is that in Java, we move one place at a time. While in the whiteboard animation, I have shown the element taking its correct position in the sorted sublist and all the elements moving towards the right. I will be coming out with more data structures and algorithms related tutorials and I would also like to request you to check out my other sorting algorithm videos which are all whiteboard animation and Java code walkthroughs which include merge sort, selection sort and radix sort and if you like the video then please uh, like and share it. Thank you.